Welcome to Focus on Suppliers. I'm Blake Woolsey. And I'm Jared Davis. Today's show is a little bit different because my friend Blake Woolsey recently emceed the Trends and Technology Conference, which was put on by the Center for Retailing Excellence at the Sam M. Walton College of Business. This was a great conference. Many retailers from outside the area all gathering here to let us know what's on the retailing landscape. And we're going to bring you some highlights of the conference yeah. on this show. And innovation was really at the forefront of a lot of that discussion. It makes me think about the fact that a lot of that thinking starts when we're kids. Mm -hmm. connects us with us on the show and really focused on the toys that we know from the past but also what are those toys from STEM and STEAM that are going to really um, push them forward in the way they're thinking about our world. We push them forward when they're young to grow up to be like Jared Ramsey who's my friend <laughs> from Rockfish. We're going to be talking about augmented reality today. It's a great discussion. And Don Harris of course is with us. He's going to be talking to sharing and caring and that is with the heart of business. They're going to be talking about their baby box. Focus on suppliers starts now. Focus on Suppliers, brought to you by 8th and Walton, where suppliers learn fast and grow, and sponsored in part by Saatchi and Saatchi X, Case Stack, Excel Displays and Packaging, Mitchell Communications Group, and other outstanding companies. We are here at the Trends and Technology Conference, fresh off the stage from a fantastic presentation, retired CIO of QVC, Ms. Linda Dillman. Linda, great to speak with you today. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, you've got experience with traditional retail, and you've also gone to the QVC format. What do you see as the difference kind of behind the scenes? Um, so yeah, there, there's a difference in the model. QVC, for example, is QVC isn't the place you go when you have already know what you're going to go buy. It's a place of discovery, so you go find new items that are interesting and exciting. But the most um, interesting difference between traditional bricks and mortar and this kind of retail is it's it's uh, extremely responsive. You can change in the moment what you're selling and who you're selling it to and react to what's happening both with your customer and in the world. I loved hearing your presentation, all the behind the scenes things, and it's actually happening in real time, the adjustments that you make on air. Going from that on air presence, how does that translate now to an e-commerce customer? So two things. Number one, we started with e-commerce being a, uh, if you will, a companion or a supporting tool for the air. But the things that we've tried to capture are that discovery and storytelling. So how do we make sure every time you go into our site that you find something new and interesting that's, that's meaningful for you, something you'd be interested in? And then how do we tell the stories about it? Because it's one of QVC's strengths is that maybe the person who created the product will tell the story and they'll show you how to use it. You'll get feedback from other customers. So we capture all of that in e-commerce. Now, speaking of QVC strengths, great mobile sales right now. What is driving that? You know, really what is driving it is, we, we, number one, we embraced it early. And we took the time to understand how our customer uses their mobile devices. So we didn't just make it a watered down or, or smaller version of what we showed on our website. We actually tried to understand when she uses her smartphone, what is she using it for? And how do we design the experience to make that the most effective for her? And for any supplier who's thinking of making that jump or trying to actually improve their e-commerce, what advice would you give? Content. It's all about mm. content. You know, when you're out there, it's, it's what the customer can see. And the best way you can tell her or him about your product it's images, it's you know the descriptions you write, it's getting your search keywords right so they can even find you. Well, Linda, we appreciate you being here and thank you for your time today. My pleasure. One of the most anticipated topics here at the Trends and Technology Conference was that of blockchain. And we just came out of a session with Ms. Bridget McDermott, who is Vice President of Blockchain Business Development with IBM. Great to meet you, Bridget. Pleasure to meet you. Great to be here. So here's the big question. For those that don't know, what is blockchain technology? Well, blockchain is all about trust. What blockchain is, it's the ability to put information onto a system of record 
such that all parties have permission to access to it in a trusted manner. You can always tell when a speaker is very passionate about what they're talking about. When I was watching your presentation, you described this as one of the sexiest things happening in innovation and retail right now. Why is this so revolutionary for retail? This is revolutionary in general. And our CEO often says blockchain has the ability to transform transactions the way that the internet transformed communications. If you think about it, this is a fundamental step in what is possible in the processes of not just retail, not just supply chain, not just manufacturing, but all businesses and all transactions that we do globally. But what matters is you have the ability to start thinking about everybody in your ecosystem as part of the business that you're doing. Because you trust the information that you are sharing across your ecosystem and because you know that you can control who has access to information, you're able to think differently about the interactions, you're able to work differently with the folks in your ecosystem, and you're able to increase efficiencies, reduce cost, and speed up the delivery of, at the end of the day, the service that you're providing to the customer. And for our suppliers who are just now becoming familiar with blockchain, how does the blockchain technology impact supply chain visibility? So blockchain can provide real benefits to supply chain visibility. What it does is it provides transparency into where goods are at any stage. And it does this by making sure or it can do this, by making sure that people have the information at the right time. Because right now, maybe the manufacturer has some information, the carrier has some information, the retailer has some information, the regulator has some information, but everybody would be better served if for that particular transaction, everybody had access to that information. You could do better demand management by knowing where things were in the cycle. You could do better process planning. If you're doing short shipments, you have better ability to see you know, how, what the difference is, how great the need actually is. You can prioritize better if you have a more holistic view of what's going on. And what has prevented us from making this sort of leap in changing supply chain visibility has not been an inability to digitize. Right? We've been able for years to put information into digital formats. The question has been whether we are able to trust the information and share it effectively between all of the parties. And what blockchain does is say, hey, we're going to take advantage of all of the innovation that has happened around data and around analytics. But what we're going to do is we're going to provide this transformation where trust actually happens and where people can use the data effectively in ways that they couldn't before. Richard, we appreciate you being at the conference. Thank you for your time. My pleasure. This was fun. We are learning a lot here at the Trends in Technology Conference, and one of the more interesting topics is how machines are learning. That is what my next guest is talking about, Mr. Rix Reiskamp, who is with Usable. Great to have you here, Rix. Thanks for having me. I, as you were talking about in your presentation, tell us about how machine learning works. Well, um, machines can learn. Um, many people don't realize that they're able to um, learn the way humans learn where uh, they can have experiences, and from those experiences they can gain knowledge, and they can use that in the future. Um, so we're used to programming computers so that they perform a specific task. And what I'm gonna be showing today is how machines can learn on their own and learn how to perform a task just like, like a human does. Um, you, you know, if you think about when you learn something, you, don't necessarily know, you're not given coded instructions on how to do what you're gonna do. You have to go in and figure it out um, and find patterns and trends and, and, and things. Um, and machines are able to do, to do the same thing. And there's a lot of innovation happening right now in machine learning that's really gonna change um, commerce forever. So I hope to tell people about that. I love when we were taking a look at your presentation yesterday, I love how you kept going back to the tip of the iceberg. Right now we're seeing a few things, but there's so much more out there. What do you see today and where do you project that machine learning will be in five, 10 years? So yeah, we are not even at the tip of the iceberg yet, but uh, so I see today, I see machine learning as, um, 
being something that is is becoming more and more common. People are starting to understand what it is. But as it becomes um, cheap and as it becomes easy and efficient and as it becomes embedded in more and more technologies, you're going to see intelligence popping up in 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 areas and devices that 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 right now we don't necessarily think of as learning. So um, the same way the computer went from um, not playing an important role in our society to playing a very important role in our society, now we have machine learning where an intelligent machine is now not playing a very critical role in our society, but as it becomes cheaper and more ubiquitous, um, you'll see that to you'll see that seep into all of the things around you, and it's going to make a make a profound change. We appreciate your time, Rex. Thank you for being here at the conference. Okay, thanks. Connect with us online. Follow Ethan Walton on Facebook. Everyone loves a good movie, but like so much these days, what's considered entertainment has and is evolving. More and more people want to engage with their entertainment. That's where the gaming industry is completely taking over. Right now, it's a $17 billion industry in the U.S. alone. In fact, a lot of the top behind-the-scenes talent from Hollywood are fleeing to video games as the sector continues to expand and draw millions of loyal fans. This trend away from traditional, passive entertainment represents a big opportunity for brands, especially in the retail environment. Retailtainment and creative demos don't have to be some large-scale, immersive experience to be effective. Have some fun with in-store demos, both physical and digital. Let consumers walk away with something more than just a sample. Bottom line, the retail space can be a movie theater or video game console for brands. So don't miss out on a fun and informational opportunity with your audience. K-Stack, the leader in collaborative retail consolidation programs. We offer the supply chain expertise needed to navigate the challenges of selling products with the world's largest retailers. And we provide customers with a customizable, scalable, environmentally sustainable supply chain with the same advanced technology typically used by larger rivals. By leveling the playing field, K-Stack lowers distribution costs and increases overall margins. K-Stack, retail logistics is what we do. Walmart announced new on-time and in-full deadlines for suppliers. Set yourself up for success and improve your OTIF score fast with Ethan Walton's OTIF training. Register today at ethanwalton.com slash OTIF. We know many of our viewers, those spanning across the United States, as well as over 145 countries, come right here into our backyard in Bentonville. And when you come, you may want some help in planning your meeting or even your convention. And no better place to start than with Visit Bentonville. So with us today is our guest, Christine Skorenko with Visit Bentonville. Thank you so much for having me today. Okay, so the idea of helping plan a meeting, is that mm -hmm. something normal that a Convention and Visitors Bureau does? Oh yes, there are many Convention and Visitor Bureaus across the country that do this, the same thing that we do in here, here in Bentonville. Uh, what we boast though is that we are here from start to finish. Five touches, we're calling and emailing, meeting before, during, and after the event. Uh, we really want to make sure that any meeting or group coming in is having a first-class service from our city and us. Now, this sounds like it's a differentiator. Is it free? Is there a cost? Our services are complimentary. It does cost to host a meeting in Bentonville. Your venues are going to charge. Um, but our services as kind of a key to the city, a helping hand to the, uh, to the meeting planners or convention planners is complimentary. Are there discounts that are provided because of working through you instead of going directly to the source? There can be. Uh, a lot of the venues and attractions do offer discounts because they know that the groups are going through us. And then we also provide funding through our Advertising and Promotions Commission. So Visit Bentonville is considered a CVB, but there is no convention center that is actually <laughs> here in our backyard unless it's somehow <laughs> erected, you know, recently and I'm not aware no. of it. How do you all handle that, not having a convention center? Yeah, so we have to, you know, think outside of the box. Uh, we try to break that mold of the convention center since we don't have one, and we've created this unconventional convention. It happens in our downtown area. It kind of creates this walkable outdoor experience for attendees to not only come and learn 
but also see the community that they're coming into. So we have different venues, they're all walkable in the downtown, and you go from your keynotes, your keynote session at Wrecker to a breakout session at Meteor or 21C, uh, and it kind of gets them outside of that, that mold of a regular convention. Really unique. Really yeah. Unique. How many? So how large and then how small? Yeah, so we uh, have hosted uh, IMBA, the International Mountain Biking Association, that had about 500, uh, a little over 500 attendees with their vendors. Uh, but we kind of can go from any size. We've gone from 25 up to about that 500. I think the normal range, about 300 to 400. We are a mid-sized city. So. Lead time that somebody needs to contact you in order to get direction? The further out, the better, just to get specific dates and venues and locations uh, to have what they want uh, as a meeting. Uh, but we can help anywhere along the timeline. This sounds like it's <laughs> such a great and unique offering that, from that key touch points along the way. Thank oh, you yes. for being with us today. Thank you for having us. As we're talking about entertainment and retailtainment, co-branding comes to mind for many of our suppliers. And Rob Ryersey of Three Tier Logic says not all promotions are created equally. So we welcome you as a guest today, Rob. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Yeah, we're happy for you to be with us. Curious though about co-branding. What what is co-branding, and what's the objective of it? Yeah, co-branding is when a, a CPG company, a supplier, um, leverages a something like a movie release or something like that to uh, to take the excitement, the goodwill that's involved with that movie release, and uh, and and jump on board and do some some creative marketing along with that. So with creative marketing, that sounds very qualitative. What kind of measurements can I have that are there that are going to tell me this was successful? Yeah. So what we do at Three Tier Logic is we help brands connect with, with consumers on their phones in the store aisle. Um, and oftentimes the programs are uh, revolve around uploading a receipt uh, to verify a purchase. And so brands are able to drive sales and acquire a lot of customer data through the programs that we run. So we're always thinking about how to get closer to the customer, whether it's in-store or online. How does this work mm -hmm. in-store? Yeah. So a customer learns about the promotion through on-pack advertising or digital advertising, social media, a variety of ways. They go and make a purchase at the store, um, upload their receipt to a customized microsite where the brand is the rock star, and, uh, and then um, receive the digital reward. Digital reward meaning it's a five dollar gift certificate. Yeah, it could or... be. Yeah, it could be five dollars off a movie ticket. It could be a free movie ticket. It could be gift cards. A, a wide variety of things. But we found that that discounts on movie tickets are really effective ways to move the needle, give people an incentive to make a purchase. And why is that the case? Well, I think it's because everybody loves to go to the movies and then complain about how expensive it is. And so a five dollars five dollars off a movie ticket it can be perceived as more valuable than even like a five dollar gift card would through be. this effort what surprises your customer so what surprises our customer is the ability to to connect with their consumers our customers being the the suppliers able to connect with consumers giving them tools to keep the conversation going even after the person leaves the store through social sharing on social media a wide variety of things that can uh, that can keep the conversation going once the purchase is made so it sounds like through this efforts it's more than just sales it's getting data exactly the brand is able to acquire uh, names, email addresses, sometimes phone numbers, that kind of information to build their own marketing database. They're also able to, um, to collect receipt information as well and get basket information tied specifically to a, a particular shopper. Great. Great way of working one-on-one -on -one with that customer exactly. that you want to come back. Rob, thank you for being with us. Don't miss our new fun podcast, the 8th and Walton Conference Call. What if you created a town today? What would that town stand for? What matters and what would stand out? And where would you find this new town? Bentonville, Arkansas. Visit Bentonville, a new American town. Are you a single parent with dreams of earning a degree or professional certification? Single Parent Scholarship Fund of Northwest Arkansas empowers families in Carroll, Madison, and Washington counties to become financially independent. A better, brighter future can be yours. Apply today at Single Parent Scholarship Fund, NWA.org. Walmart announced new on-time and in-full deadlines for suppliers. Set yourself up for success and improve your OTIF score fast with 8th and Walton's OTIF training. Register today at 8th and slash OTIF.
as we continue our conversation on entertainment, we want to bring in the discussion about toys and some of those perennial timeless toys like Tinker Toys and Lincoln Logs. And with us today is Ray Schluter. You are with Connects. Thank yes. you for joining us. Thank you. Nice to be here. What are some of the challenges that the toy category is experiencing? Um, well, big challenge for us in toys is uh, the seasonality of the category. And it's we do well over 50% of our sales in uh, 10 weeks or less, and that's very condensed. So really, you got to work on the forecasting and getting the product right, because if you don't get it right for those that time period, it's, it's very difficult. So we've got internal teams and meetings that we really try and drive to get the number right, and then meetings with our buyers and our logistics folks at Walmart to help us out and really give us some guidance into what they think will, is going to work. I'm assuming that time frame is during holiday, yes? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the Christmas uh, holiday time frame is huge. So I mentioned the timeless, your Tinker Toys and your Lincoln Logs, because those are great toys. But what are some of the other trends that you are seeing? Um, well, uh, in construction, the STEM and the STEAM trend are huge. So science, technology, education, and math, that's STEM. And STEAM is science, technology, education, arts, and math. And People, uh, parents are really looking for ways to get their kids to unplug, to move away from the tablets and the phones and that type of thing, and use the creativity in their minds. And that's where construction toys really come out. So you've got starter kits like Lincoln Logs and Tinker Toys for younger builders, and they move all the way up to Connects Building Kits and Thrill Rides for adolescent and teen builders. And so it's, it really helps people, uh, kids, only be limited by the creativity in their mind. In their own mind, mm -hmm. to where they're moving away from that device. Yeah. E-commerce obviously is something that has changed the dynamic in which we are communicating with shoppers. And how have you all dealt with e-commerce? Well, e-commerce is big for, for toys because we actually over-index in, in e-commerce, meaning that that uh, people are more likely to buy toys online than they are some other categories. And as a result, we've really embraced the category at Connects, and it's great having a partner like Walmart that has such a strong e-commerce site. So we've, we've experienced uh, double-digit growth with them for years now and really hope to see that expand and accelerate with their recent acquisition of Jet. And why do you think? Um, because it's such a giftable category. That's why it, it just uh, it indexes well for it. And then the growth is really coming from uh, both uh, the creativity of our product and also the growth in the e-commerce category itself. Great. Mm -hmm. Ray, thank you very much for yeah. being with us today. We appreciate it. Thank you. So let me take a minute to tell you something you already know. Technology is changing the way we shop. Technology is changing the way that we do business. Everything in our lives is affected by this rapid paced technology. So let's take a breather and learn a little bit about something that we're dealing with every day, augmented reality. I'm so happy to have Jared Ramsey from Rockfish Interactive back with us to talk about augmented reality and find out how this is going to evolve over the next several years. Great to see you again, Jared. It was great to see you. Thank you for having me. So first of all, how do you define augmented reality? I, I look at it as a visual blending of digital uh, and physical. You can hold up your device and you can uh, begin to scan, uh, go across a landscape or across a product or something and, and be able to interact and engage with that, with that area. And with the work you're doing every day in augmented reality, how do you see it changing the face of retail? I, the, the first place that I want to go is Pokemon Go. Oh, do we have to go to Pokemon Go? Yes, I, I think we should. I think we should all address that. Uh, it is. It, it had a huge audience. It was a phenomenon. It, it really did. And it had a spike and it's dropped down some, but it's still very, uh, very active in, in, the, in the world today. Um, and, but even, even at its height, uh, it was such a huge user base and so many people flocked to it and, and think of what suppliers and retailers could have done with such a phenomenon that was going around about knowing their audience, knowing where they're at, and knowing what they were doing. Uh, in that same breath is if you look at what Pokemon Go did is it also uh, was a game changer for uh, consumer behavior, people just being comfortable with using augmented reality in their everyday lives. As we're seeing augmented reality make more of a play in retail. Do you see it evolving more from the supplier's side or are retailers really driving that push? 
So I think, uh, in my mind, suppliers is, is where the story or is where the, uh, the push needs to come from. Um, that's because they control their brand, they control their storyline, they know the engagement that they want to have with their consumers that are using their products. Um, uh, whenever and for a retailer, a retailer can also have an engagement in with that, and they're probably going to be looking at how to how to support uh, the consumer or the shopper on making the right selections and whatnot. So there, there there's a there's a strong push from the supplier. Uh, for the brand, strong push from the retailer on the shopping side, but then there's also going to have to be a partnership between the two uh, on that conversion process. And then what are you personally looking forward to as augmented reality continues to develop? I'm looking forward to the engagement improving. I'm looking forward to uh, better interaction, better in, uh, storytelling. Uh, I think the design's going to get better. The talent's gotten better. Uh, so as a result, uh, you're going to you're, you're looking for better interactions. You're looking for better engagement. This is going to be a lot of fun to watch. Uh, over it, the next it will few be. Years, yeah, I will. I'm looking forward to it. Absolutely, Jared Ramsey, Frockfish Interactive. Thank yeah. you so much for joining us again. Thank you. Welcome to the heart of business in Northwest Arkansas. I'm your host Don Harris, and today we've got an organization that helps right here in Benton County. It's sharing and caring of Benton County, and we've got a couple of guests with us. We've got Holly Breach, who's on the board there, and we've also got Rachel Nicholson, who works for Sharing and Caring Benton County. And thank you both for being here today. Thank you for having us. Holly, you're in a leadership position. I know I'm not aware of what's, what, everything that you guys are doing. Won't you share with the audience some of the stuff that Sharing and Caring does? Sure. Well, in addition to supplying over 4,000 children with Christmas this year, we also um, decided to help high school students and we are very active in the Ignite program in Bentonville schools and we sponsored 20 students there to go through a vocational program there. As well as Gentry, their vocational program, we um, sponsored 20 kids there and then we also purchased nine beauty boxes for students going through cosmetology school this year. And it's pretty obvious we must have some kind of baby box program, Rachel, based on what we have sitting here on the table today. <laughs> Yes, our baby box program started last year. We helped about 100 families that were expecting a newborn. And what it consists of is there's a mattress inside and a safe sleeping for the baby. And there's also extra products inside as onesies and bottles and that to get them started on the way home. And it just gets them off to a good start. So, so tell us about all these products that get inside the, the crib. What, what happens here? What happens is we start asking for vendor support starting in June usually. That way that gives them enough time to get the product to our office in October. In October, we start getting the baby boxes come in. We have people come in and they go ahead and assemble them. Everything goes in them and then on distribution day, the families that qualify for them, everyone gets sent went home with them. So there's a qualification process that goes into this. Yes. And now we, we've got a timeline, it looks like. You need the samples now, and then you need volunteers until you distribute closer to the holidays. Tell us about how the volunteers work. That's correct. Well, we, we need volunteers all the time. We always have some project that we're working on. But our application process starts in October. So if you'd like to volunteer to help us ahead of time, which there's a lot of prep to it before that time, um, you'd need to get in touch with us as soon as possible. And it's also a great way to do for vendors to um, have some team support. You know, sometimes they'll have a whole team of employees that can work together and do something. We have a few of those. And it's really great to band together and do something great for our community. And it, it's a whole process of getting the support for the products, getting them put together, getting the distribution right around the holiday time period Correct. so that these new infants that are coming have got a better start than they would have had yes. without. What an ingenious idea. Sometimes the simplest answers are the best answers, aren't they? <laughs> we want to thank you both for being here today. We hope that folks can support the program, and we appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank well, you for having us. My pleasure. We'll see you next time on The Heart of Business in Northwest Arkansas. Connect with us online. Follow Ethan Walton on Facebook. Our guests enjoy staying at the 21C Museum Hotel and hosting dinner, meetings, and product launches there. Okay, I know on the show I'm not supposed to be biased, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you what my favorite part was. What was your it favorite was part? Meeting Miss Linda Dillman from QVC. Uh, you know, fantastic. I'm so jealous you got to interview her. I, the only reason I even said that was because I knew it was going to tear Blake up. <laughs> <laughs> but let me tell you, it was nice talking to Linda because I'd always wondered, you know, QVC is marketing to that TV audience. Well, online shopping comes along. It just seems kind of natural that that would suffer. But the way they've been able to engage the audience, the whole back end process and make that storytelling part of this big holistic experience, absolutely fascinating. Great to meet her. Right. Yeah, I know. She's awesome. Mm -hmm. She's wonderful. Uh, Rob Ryersey of um, Three Tier Logic 
talking really about connecting to that to that consumer, and I felt like it, there was really a lot of alignment of what you heard from QVC as well as what they're doing for their for their customers. Absolutely. Hey, don't forget to like us on YouTube. Go back and watch us again. Rewind us. Watch us many times. Subscribe on YouTube. We'll see you next week.